What's the difference between a noun and a pronoun, a verb and an adverb, an adjective, and all of these things? Parts of speech. That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there! Thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is the first video that you're watching from my channel, I make educational and motivational content. So if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. Now, like I said in the intro kanina, we're going to talk about the parts of speech. And I'm just going to give you a quick rundown, give you examples, give you a quick quiz at this para sa dulo, maintindihan nyo talaga, and masigurado ko rin that you understand yung ating discussion. Now, in order for me to explain this better, I'm going to switch over to my PC. I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so ito yung discussion natin on the parts of speech. We're going to talk about the eight na laging uh, ginagamit and uh, whether you're still in school right now or kung kayo ay uh, out of school pero trying to take an exam. These are things that will be fundamental when it comes to yung uh, sentence construction, even subject verb agreement, and other things like that. Okay? So, dadaan natin siya isa-isa. So, these are the eight parts of speech na i-discuss natin in this video. First, we have the noun, the pronoun, the adjective, verb, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and inter interjection. I actually made a uh, couple of videos now on prepositions and um, all of those naman ay na-discuss ko na. Pero all of these, I will see if you're interested na i-breakdown ko siya into the types and other examples. Let me know na lang sa comments sa baba, okay? Now, why are these eight important? Bakit sila importante sa discussion natin? Actually, these are some of the building blocks ng sentences and ng language in itself. Ibig sabihin, when we're trying to construct sentences and I know a lot of you ask for advice sa uh, paggawa ng mga essays or paggawa ng papers yung pag paggawa ng paper you have to break it down into parts into paragraphs into outlines into sentences and into words and all of these words or types of uh, um, language building blocks are used to form yung thought or to express yung thought na gusto nating sabihin so think of it as different lego pieces that you put together to form sentences now, let's start with uh, yung ating isa sa mga pinaka building blocks, which is yung noun. Ang noun ay name ng people, places, things, or ideas. Sa Filipino, ito yung tinatawag natin pangalan with two NGs. Ito yung mga, uh, isa sa mga pinaka-main na parts ng isang sentence kasi most sentences contain at least one noun. Kasi kailangan mo pag-usapan kung sino yung pinag-uusapan, sino yung gumagawa, ano yung action, ano yung kanyang kinuha, ano yung kanyang pinuntahan. All of these are made up of people, places, things, or or ideas. Okay? So, kung hindi man noun ang nasa sentence pronoun, which we'll talk about later. Now, examples of this would be, uh, or types of this would be common nouns. Yung common nouns, these are, for example, girls, fruits. Okay? Ito yung general na mga nouns. Proper nouns naman, a uh, uh, good way to tell would be kung nakakapitalize yung first letter. Proper nouns are actual names. So, for example, you have Ben, uh, you have uh, Mary, you have, kunyari, usapang Pokemon, you have Charmander. Okay? So, capital C yun. Kasi yun yung pangalan niya. Pag specific na, it usually goes into the category ng proper nouns. We also have collect, collective nouns, possessive nouns, compound nouns, and other things like that. There are actually rules governing kung paano mo siya gagawin plural, kung paano mo siya gagamitin sa subject verb agreement. I actually covered a bunch of those topics in other videos. And if you haven't seen those, ililink ko na lang din sa upper right corner if you're watching this on YouTube. Okay? Now, ang noun again, if you look for it in a sentence, it has to be a name of a pe of a person, place, thing, or idea. And hindi lang siya laging nasa first part ng sentence. It can be found peppered throughout one sentence. Now, I actually put up a sentence or a, a, a couple of sentences to uh, give you an idea of all of these parts. Sabi dito, wow, Laika really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for her collection. So, itong sentence na ito, or sentences na ito, ay uh, gagamitin natin to showcase all of the parts of speech that we're going to discuss today. And itong noun, which is yung name of people, places, things, or ideas, nasaan ba siya sa sentence na yan? Can you spot yung nouns? Ilan sila? Okay? Now, um, with that time, hopefully, nakita nyo na yung mga nouns na meron tayo. We actually have a few. Number one, we have Laika. Laika is a name of a person. Okay, and this is actually a proper noun. As you can see, nakakapitalize yung L. So, isa itong proper noun. Yan ay proper 
uh, na pangalan ng isang tao. So, that is one noun. Another is this, toys. Toys ay noun din. Ito ay isang bagay, pangalan ng isang bagay. Okay, isang uri ng bagay. You have toys. Pero yung category niyan would be something, uh, siguro common noun na lang yan kasi wala namang capital. Hindi naman siya specific, hindi naman siya pangalan talaga. So, toys, noun din yan. Another thing would be sneakers. Ang sneakers ay noun din. Yan ay isang bagay din. Okay, and if you notice, hindi lang siya nga, again, yung nasa simula ng sentence, peppered siya throughout. One more would be yung word na collection. Kasi ang collection is also a name of a thing. Ang collection mo would be, siguro kung meron kang collection ng mga sneakers or toys, um, isa yung bagay pa rin kung tutuusin mo. Kaya lang, in this case, okay, yung collection mo kasi is a group of things. So, maybe it can fall under collective noun. Um, and again, there are rules governing that. So, doon na nagkakaroon usually confusion pagdating sa subject-verb agreement. We'll break down all of those rules in other videos, okay? So, in this sentence in particular, we have four nouns right away. Laika, which is a proper noun. Toys. Sneakers, which are common nouns. And then you have yung collection. Next, we have pronouns. Ang pronouns naman, okay, they take the place of nouns. Ang pronoun would be something like I, you, we, they, he, she, it, me, us, them, him, her, this, those, or other things like that. I actually have a video on this, that, these, and these, uh, those, uh, that uh, series. I link ko na lang din sa upper right kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung tamang paggamit sa kanila. Pero kaya siya nagtitig ng place of nouns kasi instead of you saying the name, you will use a pronoun instead. For example, if I say na Laika likes clothes, kunyari lang. Instead of saying Laika likes clothes, Laika likes sneakers too, I can just say na Laika likes clothes, she likes sneakers too. So it's a bit about the the styling then ng pagsusulat pero kasi ang pangit kasi pakinggan kung lagi mong gagamitin yung proper noun medyo yung tinatawag dating baroque type ng language ganun yung dating niya so usually ang ginagamit natin diyan would be sa first sentence we use the proper noun and then yung mga consecutive na mga sentences about that same person we usually use a pronoun Okay? And we only use the proper noun, again, kung merong distinction sa ibang character na ipapasok mo dun sa uh, kinukwento mong paragraph or narrative. Okay? So, ito yung mga pronouns natin. Pwede siyang, um, pwede siyang nasa first person or nasa third person. Pwede isang tao lang or maramihan. And all of these rules we'll talk about in future videos as well. So again, dito sa sentence natin, wow, Laika really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for her collection. Ano yung pronoun dyan? Alright, so there is a pronoun there at yun yung word na her. Now, why does it matter that we use the word her instead of Laika? Kasi kung babasahin mo to and it takes the place ng, uh, ng word na Laikas, Kung lalagawin kong Laika's yan, that would be Laika really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for Laika's collection. Ang pangit pakinggan kasi sinabi mo na yung Laika sa simula, tapos sasabihin mo pa uli siya sa second part ng sentence. So instead of saying Laika's with an apostrophe S kasi possessive siya, ang sasabihin mo na lang would be her, for her collection. Okay? So it's a possessive pronoun, parang ganun. Next natin is yung adjective. Ano naman ang adjective? An adjective describes, modifies, or gives more information about a noun or a pronoun. So, nagbibigay siya ng more information, it describes it, uh, basically, ina, ina, ano niya, binibigyan niya ng definition, um, binibigyan niya ng character, sinasabi niya kung anong klase ito, binibigyan niya ng pagkakakilanlan yung noun or pronoun. So, it's basically adding layers to that. So, you don't just say, ah, Young child, you're now going to say something like, ah, that small child, that tall girl. These are words that describe something or someone na nandun sa sentence na yon. Okay? Examples would be big, happy, young, fun, or small. So that small house, that uh, those big shoes. These are usually paired with um, the noun or pronoun. And kadalasan, uh, magkatabi talaga yan. For example, dito sa ating sentence, wow, Laika really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for her collection. Nasa ng adjectives dyan? Nakita nyo na ba? Okay. Now, again, kadalasan nga, kadikit siya sa noun. So, alam na natin yung noun natin. We have Laika, toys, sneakers, and collection. Ang, ano yung mga words na nakadikit dyan that describe them? We have first the word cute. Ano yung cute? 
yung toys. Now, ang test ninyo to know if my adjective sa sentence would be to ask, sino yung cute? Okay? Ano yung cute? Yung cute is definition siya ng word na toy. So, connected siya. Yung cute ay yung toys. Another adjective would be yung cool. Kasi, ano yung cool? Ang cool ay yung sweaters. So, these are related. Cute defines toys. Cool defines sneakers. Okay? So, your adjective is something that describes. Next is yung verb. Ang verb is what we call the action word kasi it shows actions or states of being. Ibig sabihin, um, sinasabi niya kung ano yung ginagawa. Kung ang adjective ay more like definition kung ano siya, ang verb ay ano ang ginagawa niya. Okay? Ano yung kanyang kalagayan or state of being. For example, we have go, speak, run, eat, play, and yung common na is at R. Again, uh, reiterating na ang is is used for singular at ang are ay ginagamit for plural. Ito yung mga verbs na meron tayo. Maraming types yan ng verbs. Uh, maraming may mga linking verb tayo and everything like that. Again, if you want me to discuss that, just uh, comment in the comment box below. No? Pero dito sa sentence na ito, sabi, Wow, Laika really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for her collection. Nasaan ang mga verb dito? Ano ang mga verb? Okay, nakikita nyo na ba? First, we have loves, no? Kasi ang loves is something that shows action. Minamahal niya or mahilig. Um, like I really loves. So, um, kung mahal niya or uh, ang isang bagay, action yun eh. Uh, and you see this in quotes sa mga t-shirts and sa mga wallpapers ng mga tao, no? Ren, that love is a verb, no? It's not just a noun. It's not just a feeling. It's a verb. Ibig sabihin, it takes action. Yun yung ibig sabihin nitong loves na ito. Okay? So, it's not, take, it's not talking about love as in the feeling. It's talking about loves or loving. Ibig sabihin, the action. Yung action ng pagmamahal. So, loves is a verb. Another thing is yung finding. Kasi ang finding is looking for, searching the process, okay? The action of looking for something. So, we can consider loves as a verb, finding as a verb then, okay? Kasi yun yung kanyang ginagawa. So, anything that expresses action would be your verb, okay? Now, ano naman yung adverb? Ang adverb, okay? Isipin ninyo na lang ad, at verb, parang yung relationship ng noun at pronoun. Ang pronoun takes the place of the noun. Ang adverb naman, it actually, ah, parang ano siya, it's an adjective for a verb or another adjective or other adverbs. Ibig sabihin, hindi na describe niya pa more. Sinasabi niya kung anong klase. For example, we have slowly, quietly, very, always, never, well. These are some examples of words that describe something na ginagawa. For example, slowly walking, quietly talking, diba? all of these, yung yung slowly na yon, slowly walking, sinasabi niya, hindi lang siya naglalakad. Ano yung pamamaraan ng kanyang paglalakad? Dine-describe niya kung anong klaseng lakad yung ginagawa. Okay? So, for example, dito sa sentence na ito, we have the word really. Kasi anong klaseng love? Ang, anong intensity? Anong klaseng pagmamahal? O, kung really loves, ibig sabihin, hindi siya yung casual na uh, pagmamahal. Siya ay more intense than that. So, a clue when it comes to adverbs would be the li. You would see, di ba, slowly, quietly, um, pwede rin, ano, loudly, okay? Um, and yung mga li na yan na words are usually adverbs. Kung meron kang full word na dinagdagan ng li, usually yun yung adverb na form niya. Parang yung really din kung tutuusin kasi it's real and then li. So, ibig sabihin, it expresses na hindi lang, yung love niya ay hindi lang simple kundi mas intense ba lang kasi it's really loves, okay? Um, you use this in sentences to express a higher form ng emotion or to be more specific sa klase ng kaganapan. Okay? So, um, you have to use this with intent all the time. And we'll cover that siguro sa, sa next videos natin on constructing sentences na lang. Next is the preposition. And again, prepositions are very tricky for Filipinos kasi wala tayo mga prepositions in our own language. I actually have a series of videos na on prepositions. Prepositions of time, prepositions of place, prepositions of transportation. If you haven't seen those videos yet, ililink ko na lang din sa taas. Now, prepositions, again, with the word position, uh, it shows the relationship of a noun or pronoun to another part of the sentence. So, preposition, basically, it shows the position. It shows the relationship. Ano ba siya in reference to another thing? Okay? 
um, ano ang relationship nila, sila ba yung magkatabi, sila ba yung magkasama, sila ba yung para sa isa't isa. All of these things are um, showed by yung preposition na ginagamit. Okay? Iba-iba yung by, to, from, about, all of these. Iba-iba sila ng purpose. So, examples natin, at, on, in, ito yung pinaka-common, from, with, near, between, about, and under. And prepositions are not just about physical positions, ha? Pwede rin siyang about relationships, okay? Or about things or experiences. Kasi pag sinabi, we went through a huge uh, problem or we went through a, a very painful breakup or a very bad breakup or something like that, yung through na yon is not physical. Pero it shows na merong experience and you went, by saying that you're going through something, ibig sabihin, it became a process na lalampasan mo na. In the same way na a thread goes through a needle. Kasi siya ay pumasok at lumusot din sa kabilang end. Okay? So again, there are nuances for this. I will try my best to make more videos on prepositions, especially yung mga verb, verbal na uh, preposition phrases and uh, those will be coming soon na lang. Okay? So, dito sa sentence natin na, wow, Laika really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for her collection. Ano yung preposition natin dito? Ang preposition natin would be yung for. Kasi, ano sila sabi dito? Yun yung kinoconnect natin yung relationship nung cute toys and cool sneakers sa kanyang collection. So, yung kanyang toys and cool sneakers ay para or para sa purpose ng kanyang collection. So, it shows yung relationship nun. So, these are things I get in order to include sa collection. Kunyari lang. Okay? So, yun yung pinaka-value ng preposition. Next, we have uh, yung ating tinatawag na conjunction. Ang conjunction naman is something that joins two or more words, ideas, phrases, and clauses together. So, instead of just saying one thing for every sentence, pwede ka magdagdag ng conjunction para pagsamayin sila sa isang sentence. For example, we have the words and, or, but, because, so, yet, unless, since, and if. In this, in this sentence, we have the word and. So, like her really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for her collection. Now, bakit ito tinatawag na conjunction? Kasi, by joining yung cute toys and cool sneakers sa isang sentence, hindi mo na siya kailangan sabihin twice. Kasi kung hindi mo sila pagsasamahin, ang kailangan mo sabihin would be something like this. Wow! Laika really loves finding cute toys for her collection. And then, another sentence, Laika really loves finding cool sneakers for her collection. So, twice mo siya sasabihin. Pero dahil gumamit ka ng conjunction, yung dalawang love niya pwede mo nang pagsamayin sa isang sentence. So, Laika really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for her collection. So, yun yung value ng conjunction. You can put two things together na, again, should have some form of relationship. If you use the word and, ibig sabihin pareho sila. Kung sinabi mong but, ibig sabihin exception siya. Pag sinabi mong or, ibig sabihin pipili ka ng isa sa kanila. Again, iba-iba yan ang purpose and you have to know the, the difference between them. Okay? Next, we have the interjection, which is going to be the last dito sa ating eight parts ng speech. Ang interjection, again, think of the word in or inter, ang in or inter kasi internal, interest, inside, uh, nasa loob. So, parang sumingit siya. So, pag interject ka, parang injection, di ba, katunog din, no? injection, bisa yung nagpasok ka or uh, sumingit ka, it's something na nilalagay mo sa isang sentence that expresses a strong feeling or emotion. So, something like, wow, bravo, ouch, oh, hey, all of these are interjections kasi, Wala naman siya talagang, uh, hindi man siya sobrang stand alone as a sentence by itself. Pero it expresses yung strong emotion. At pwede mo siya isingit doon sa sentence para lang bigyan siya ng mas masidhing damdamin or emotion. No? So for example, ito yung wow. Laika really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for her collection. Kasi kung sinabi mo lang na Laika really loves finding cute toys and cool sneakers for her collection, that's just a statement. Pero by including wow, wow! Ibig sabihin, ikaw ay na amazed, probably yung nagsasalita, ay ako rin, mahilig din ako sa mga toys and sneakers. So yun yung nagiging purpose niya. The statement now becomes more powerful, mo more strong, and more emotional. Yun yung dahilan. Okay? Now, we're going to have a quick quiz. Yung quick quiz natin ay syempre on parts of speech. Ang gagawin nyo dito is basically to mark yung parts ng sentence na binibigay ko sa inyo. Alin doon ang noun, alin ang pronoun, ano ng interjection, conjunction, and all of those things. I'm going to give you three minutes for this para ma-spot nyo ang bawat isa sa kanila. And then at the end, pag-uusapan natin. Alright? So if you're ready with your pen and paper, your timer starts now.
All right, let's see how you did. So yung ating sentence, sabi, Oh, Ash confidently called his Pikachu to face the stubborn Meowth and Wobbuffet. Okay? So yung mga Pokemon Go kids dyan at mga 90s original Pokemon babies, uh, shout out sa inyong lahat. Ako rin ay mahilig sa Pokemon ever since I was a kid, no? So sabi dito, Oh, Ash confidently called his Pikachu to face the stubborn Meowth and Wobbuffet. So siguro nasa gitna sila ng battle. Ito yung commentator, no? nagsasalita siya. So hanapin natin muna yung noun. Ano yung noun? Again, name ng person, place, so or thing, or event. Ano yun mga yun dito? We have first yung Ash. Next is Pikachu. We also have Meowth and Wobbuffet. So all of them, these are all nouns. These are names of si Ash Tao, si Pikachu, Meowth, and Wobbuffet are Pokemon. Now, ano yung pronoun? May pronoun ba tayo dito? Is there something that takes uh, yung place ng isang noun? Yes, we have his. Kasi yung his, pwede mo sabihin na Ash is Pikachu. Ash apostrophe S. Pero dahil ni natin yung ginamit, his takes the place of that word. So, ang his natin is a pronoun. Okay? Adjective. Anything that describes something. Okay? Ang ano ang describe dyan? We have the word stubborn. Ang stubborn or matigas ang ulo. Sino ang stubborn? Ang stubborn is yung meowth at yung wabofet. So, describe niya yung noun na yan. Yan ay adjective. Verb naman tayo. Verb is an action word. Ano yung action dyan? Ang action dyan would be, we have the called, kasi tinawag. Ang pagtawag ay isang action. And yung face can also be a verb. Kasi ay tinawag siya para harapin. Ang pagharap na yan ay also an action. So face. And then we have the word confidently as the adverb. Kasi yung anong klase yung pagtawag niya? Ang pagtawag niya ay confidently. So confidently called. This word na confidently, it describes yung word na called. Okay? It doesn't describe... Ash, it describes yung pagkakatawag ni Ash sa kanyang Pikachu. Okay? Preposition naman natin is yung word na to. Okay? Kasi, binibridge niya yung dalawa. Okay? Sasagot niya yung tanong na, bakit niya tinawag yung Pikachu niya? Kitawag niya yung Pikachu niya to face the stubborn Meowth and Wapofet. Okay? So, sinasabi niya kung ano yung relationship ng pagharap at ng pagtawag. Next, we have the conjunction. Ang conjunction natin here is the word and. So, pinagdugtong natin yung Meowth and Wobbuffet kasi pareho naman silang haharapin ni Pikachu. Okay? Conjunction natin would be and. Now, interjection. Ang interjection natin madaling hanapin with the kanyang exclamation point, O. Oh. Kasi ang O, oh, again, doesn't hold a lot of meaning to itself pero used like this, it's an emotion. Parang nagulat yung, yung spectator. O, oh, Ash confidently called his Pikachu to face the stubborn Meowth and Wobbuffet. So, those are the parts that we have. Now, there is this word right here, the, na walang underline. Ano ba yan? Yan ay tinatawag nating article. I actually have a video on the articles A, and and the, and how to use them. If you haven't seen that yet, ililink ko na lang din sa taas so you can catch up. Okay? So, hopefully, you got the same answers. And again, this is just a bit of an intro. I'll be breaking down all of those naman in videos coming soon. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Okay? Now, if you didn't uh, score a perfect score dun sa ating quick quiz, that's okay. I'll be posting more questions on my Instagram account. So, do follow me at Like Amaravilla for more updates. And uh, para dun sa ating story feature na quiz where you can participate and answer along with every team like a member all over the world. Alright? That's a great way for me to know kung natututo kayo and for you din to know kung anong mga topics ang alam nyo na at kung anong topics ang kailangan pa ng konting help. Alright? Alright, hope you learned something today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video with your friends and nakamag exam din sila. Dati mas marami tayong matulungan. And kahit naman hindi sila mag-exam if you're there trying to learn language, this may be really helpful sa kanila din. So, um, feel free to do that. And uh, if you want to reach out to me directly, get the reviewers that I may, join the online or live review events, you can go to www.facebook.com slash teamlaika for more information. And uh, you can reach out to me directly doon or comment sa baba kung meron kayong mga requests na gusto nyo pag-usapan natin sa susunod. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell para hindi nyo mamiss yung mga paparating pa lang ng mga videos. There are more lessons coming up. And sana makita ko kayo doon. As well, I say dito sa team, never stop learning. Adja, adja. Kainian, I'll see you on my next video and bye for now.